Thanks very much. All right, to say first responders work on a high-stress job certainly would be an understatement. And joining us now with some tips for helping first responders who may be struggling is Michael Murata with Warriors Heart Virginia. Mike, I appreciate you coming in today, first of all. Yeah. I know you have a facility here in northern Virginia, yeah. so, uh, you know, close by. But who is it that you're looking to help, and how are you doing it? Yeah, so we serve the warrior class. And how we define the warrior class is active duty military, veterans of the United States military, and then active former retired first responders. That includes law enforcement. Uh, fire, EMS, dispatch, and some of our emergency healthcare workers. And what we do at Warriors Heart is we're looking to treat, uh, we're looking for a primary diagnosis of substance use disorder, but we understand that the substance gets all the attention, but we know that there's something going on underneath that. Sure. Uh, so we also treat at our facility the co-occurring mental health disorder, things like post-traumatic stress injury, things like depression, anxiety. So what we really wanna do is get underneath the substance and help our responders and our military heroes unpack some of that. So here's the challenge, and, and it's been a challenge for a long time, it, 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 one of the challenges. A lot of times with first responders and, and with veterans or active yeah. duty military, you don't wanna talk about it, right? You don't wanna give into that, and you might sure. think that, you know, maybe I, I have an issue, whether it's substance abuse, whether it's alcohol, whether it's just the, the strain, the stress, the mental health that's weighing on you, but it's hard to open up about it. How do you how do you bridge that? Yeah, that's a great that's a great question. It, it is difficult. And having served for nearly two decades in law enforcement myself, and I'm also a veteran of the United States Air Force, uh, it gave me a unique perspective and insight. And so at Warriors Heart, we like to say warriors healing warriors. That is our mission statement. We believe in the peer to peer uh, contact. Uh, we like to bring in people who have served, people who are also in recovery quite honestly, to come in and then help these responders heal and also bridge the gap between, well, I don't want to say anything and I do need the help. Uh, so I like to say that I'm a, I'm a bridge builder and many of the staff members there at Warriors Heart are as well. You also kind of had a little retrospective of your own life and career, <laughs> you know, and you found some moments that really stood out to you. And I think that, that that's beneficial because it can actually help maybe some other families yeah. notice if they can recognize signs with their loved ones where maybe things are starting to change. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the signs, I'm gonna tell you, Steve, the, the signs are incremental. And oftentimes it's happening and you don't even really notice it. But some things that I wanna encourage families to look for is physical changes, weight gain, weight loss, maybe a withdrawal from the family, withdrawal from activities they once found pleasurable, Look for things like forgetfulness, uh, inability to make a decision, processing information. There may be some uh, emotional changes, things like anger, things like rage, cynicism. You got this once idealistic, positive outlook responder, excited to do this job. Suddenly, three years into their career, they're going, you say, who is this person? I don't even recognize them anymore. And then finally, the behavioral changes. We need to start looking for things like the addiction that's a, a one that's, that's absolutely uh, killing in the most literal sense of the word, our first responders. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how you said it, too, because, you know, you have a lot of these men and women who, yeah. you know, they signed up for these careers yeah. and, and these jobs because they wanted to help people. Yes. And then if you notice that suddenly the mindset might yeah. not be there anymore, that's a good a good sign of awareness there. Good news is you can get some help. You can get them help uh, yeah. if folks are interested in learning more. And I know you do some inpatient programs at, at your facilities. We but, do. Uh, that and otherwise, what's the best way for them to reach out? Uh, we encourage them to go to www.warriorsheart.com forward slash connect. We have admissions advocates standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they can also reach out via phone number 866-955-4035. And I want to encourage um, our responders, our military folks, their families, like nobody struggles alone. If you need help, reach out now. All right, Michael, I appreciate you coming in today. Hopefully that helps some folks here in the D.C. area yeah. where obviously we, we have so many veterans and uh, active duty in addition to the first responders. Thanks, Thank you, good Steve. to see you this morning. Appreciate, appreciate you coming in. All right, Marissa, we'll send it back to you yes, at 721. Help, help is there. It's an incredible segment. Time now, 721.